Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated. Dot com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me for today's podcast, as he so often does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, we're here to talk about North Carolina's NCAA tournament resume, NCAA tournament hopes, as there's just one more regular season game remaining for the Tar Heels, and that's this Saturday against the Duke Blue Devils in Chapel Hill. And AJ, we're recording this on Wednesday morning. I, I know the net rankings fluctuate and kind of change every day. So this is kind of what we're looking at right now um, as of, you know, 11, 12 o'clock on Wednesday. So Carolina currently, I'm going to go ahead and kind of run through their records in terms of overall and, and away and home real quick. And then I'll dive into to some of the net ranking stuff before I kick it to you to dive into it a little bit deeper but the Tar Heels sitting at 15 and 9 overall 9 and 6 in ACC play 9 and 1 at home 3 and 7 on the road and 3 at 1 uh, at neutral site venues now looking at their net rankings AJ Carolina currently sitting at 44th in the net rankings in terms of Q1 wins 2 and 7 overall both of those victories coming against Florida State and Duke now we've talked about this previously these things can fluctuate on a day-to-day basis depending on who's playing, who wins, who loses, all that kind of stuff. But as of right now, on Wednesday, 2-7, and seven, and like I mentioned, those wins coming at home against Florida State and on the road against Duke. 5-1 and one, Q2 wins, 5-1 and one, Q3 wins, and 3-0 and oh in Q4 wins, AJ. So let's go ahead and just dive into it. I know looking at that, Carolina is, I guess if the NCAA tournament started Tomorrow, they'd probably get in it. Uh, they're still obviously, like I said, playing this weekend, last regular season game against Duke, and then they go to the ACC tournament next week. So a lot of things can still change depending on how the, the Tar Heels do in, in those games. But right now, AJ, what are your just kind of thoughts on where the Tar Heels sit? I know that FSU win definitely helped them out a lot because FSU is you know, the top team in the league right now. But what are your, your just kind of overall thoughts on, on Carolina's NCAA tournament resume and as of right now where they're sitting? Well, the FSU win gives them a marquee win. Yeah, they needed that. They didn't have before. Their best win before that was Louisville, which Mm -hmm. dropped 20 spots in the NET after Mm -hmm. Carolina Rodham. Yeah, they hadn't played in what, 19 days or something crazy like that? (laughs) Yeah, so Florida State gives them a really good win. That will be a really good win in a week and a half when the selection committee kind of figures everything out. So they've got that, and they needed that because they didn't previously have that. So uh, that will help. And it's a recent win, and it will help them that some of their better performances have come more recently. Of course, some of their most puzzling ones have as well. But all the teams that are in that last group trying to get in the NCAA tournament, they all have similar resumes. They all look like they all look good one day, they look like crap another day. That's why they're at yeah. the bottom of the bubble. That's why they're in that area. Consistently uh, if, if inconsistent, they, as I like Yeah, <laughs> if they were better, they wouldn't be on the bubble. And Carolina's clearly on the bubble. I, yeah, I would – it's great with Lenardi and Jerry Palm and those guys, Andy Katz, with me when they do their brackets that they have Carolina in right now, but they're in a dangerous place. Mm-hmm. They're in a dangerous place because they have a losable game coming up Saturday. Mm-hmm. Duke's lost two in a row in overtime. Uh, Matthew Hurt doesn't foul out against Georgia Tech. Duke probably wins that game. Probably, yeah. Duke is a different team now than when Carolina played it a few weeks ago. The Mark Williams factor, I think, is huge. He's averaging mm-hmm. – 27 minutes a game in the last three games. He's been at 18 two games ago, 18 points, and he was at 20 last night at Georgia Tech, and mm-hmm. he was a force in there. And the way well. he just he gives them activity in the paint that they didn't have. Now, he played like 12 or 13 minutes the first game, and he was just mm-hmm. starting to get to the rotation. He's a better, more confident player now. They're more used to playing with him. Anybody that doesn't think Carolina can lose that game home to Duke, not paying attention to either Carolina or Duke. No. And then they go to Greensboro, and they're, they're, it looks like they're going to have to play on Wednesday. So they should get a fairly winnable game that day. What I'm getting at is that they got to win a game. They got to win another game. Oh, and the best case scenario would be to be due because they're probably going to get help the most in their in their NET, which is a computer ranking, mm-hmm. if they beat Duke. Now, you don't want them lose to you know, State or something like that in, in Greensboro, but hey, State's playing well. You never know. I have no yeah, idea yeah. who they'd be matched up with there. They got to let things shake out. The point is that if Carolina gets another win, I think they're going to be in good shape to get in the tournament. If they lose to Duke, then they go to Greensboro having to win a game. And the reason I say that is because don't look at last four in or, or the four before the last four in right now and think, okay, if you're in that group and you're, you don't have to play a playing game, you're okay. You, mm-hmm. You're going to be in good shape. Because the conference tournaments that have, some have already started 
that's where some craziness can happen that will knock bubble teams off the bubble. Mm-hmm. For example, let's say in the West Coast Conference, I, you know, Gonzaga obviously is in. I think BYU is a lock as well to get in the tournament. They're probably in one of those eight, nine games. But let's say St. Mary's wins the tournament. Or let's say Santa Clara wins the tournament. Let's say Gonzaga just pulls a no-show. They, they're there physically, but they're not there mentally. And they get they get upset. And BYU just doesn't shoot well from the perimeter, which happens to them sometimes. And they lose. And, you know, Herb Sendek and Santa Clara win the league and they go to the NCAA tournament. Herb Sendek, I've never heard that name in a while. <laughs> I covered Herb for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I better say, that, yes, you that'd did. Be, personally, that'd be kind of cool to see him do something like yeah, that. But yeah, it, would, it, would, it means that one of the bubble teams, whoosh, out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's say in the Missouri Valley, Drake lost a couple of their best players a few weeks ago over the last few weeks, and they're not playing as well. I, I'm not sure Drake's going to get in because the committee will have to evaluate them as is. They'll almost yeah. have to disregard the first 18 games or so and evaluate them since the injuries. Probably not going to get in. Loyola is a lot to get in. But let's say Illinois State wins a tournament. Mm. Whoosh, that's going to lop off another bubble team. That's a good point, in, yeah. In the American – if Houston doesn't win the America, let's say SMU doesn't, SMU's capable of winning that league, whoosh, that knocks off another bubble team. So mm-hmm. you want to position yourself before you get to Greensboro of not having to worry about that. That means yeah. Carolina must be Duke. It, they, don't worry about what the NET is or quad won this or quad 48 that. The Tar Heels must be Duke. If they beat Duke, they get the 16 wins. I don't know what kind of bump they'll get in their NET, but they'll be North Carolina at 16 wins. They'll have a winning record. It'll be the 10th ACC win. They're only playing 17 ACC games. So mm-hmm. 16 wins, 10 and 7 in the ACC. Uh, it'll be a quad two win. They will be given their seventh quad two wins. They have two quad one wins. So that's nine quad one and two wins. Not bad. If you look at the NET and you look at some of the teams up there that are seriously rated you know, number nine in the country and there's number 20 yep. in the country. And, you know, when you look at some of those teams and you look at their NET, their quad one wins or quad two wins, it's kind of bizarre to, to mm-hmm. figure out why they're where the way they are, where they are in the rankings. Carolina can't control how on earth Colgate's number nine in the NET. They can't yeah, that one's mind-boggling, on, yeah. They can't control how on earth San Diego State has its NET ranking, given its resume or where Colorado State is or Santa Barbara, teams like that. What they can control is where Carolina is in its win loss record. Look, the bottom line, and I'm going to emphasize this 100,000 times, is Carolina's got to beat Duke. So beat mm-hmm. Duke, I think they're in. Beat Duke, win a game in Greensboro, win Wednesday in Greensboro, and, and they're going to avoid what used to be the Dayton games. This year, everything's in Indianapolis. So the play in games, they'll avoid that no matter what happens in the other conference tournaments. If they don't beat Duke, then they better root for all the top seeds and all those other leagues. Yeah. More upsets that occur and teams win those tournaments and get the automatic invitation, the more clubs on the fence are going to be hurt. So you don't want to be on the fence. You want to be much, you want to be a couple of lengths in front of the fence by the time you get to Greensboro uh, to be able to uh, not have to sweat anything out. They're going to sweat out a seed and, and who mm-hmm. might be in the bracket, but the bottom line is they just want to get in mm-hmm. and assure themselves of getting in, which is what this is kind of about. So Beat Duke, you're in. Beat Duke, win a game in Greensboro, you got nothing to worry about. Lose both and no chance, right? I mean, no, I lose to Duke and then go lose in the tournament. It's I mean, everybody else, maybe not no chance, of, but they're mm-hmm. competing with teams that lose a lot, so it's not like a, a bunch point. of the other ones can't lose too. Mm-hmm. They're not, well, not like they're going to be the only bubble team that loses twice in the next week if they lose. That's a good point, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can lose and still get in. I've seen that happen before. So I remember an mm-hmm. Oklahoma team. I believe it was the Eduardo Nahara team back in 98 <laughs> or something like that. They were like 16 and 14 or something crazy like that. And they were 63 in the RPI, I think, around that range, 66. And they got, and everyone said they had no business in the tournament. And of course, Nahara went nuts and let them in the Sweet 16. And people thought, well, that validated them being in there. You don't validate a whole lot in two games in a one, one and out tournament. But uh, this is a different time. We don't know how teams are going to be judged. Yeah. Um, for example, Carolina, um, the win over Louisville, is the committee going to weigh that the same as if they would have beaten Louisville a week later by the same amount? It's a good point, yeah. Because Louisville's come out of two COVID pauses and got blown out by the time at Wisconsin and Carolina. Uh-huh. So I've been told that the committee is going to evaluate on a curve. But what is that curve? Yeah, what does that mean? So in yeah. that game, for example, 
do you downplay Carolina's route and do you and so you don't give them as much uh, substance for that victory mm-hmm. and the way they went about it because co- Louisville was coming out of a long COVID pause and do you also kind of minimize the, the you know, how much you know, Louisville's hurt by a performance like that if yeah. that's the case there's some teams you already got a shortened schedule mm-hmm. so how long do you kind of give a team sort of an asterisk next to a couple of bad losses? That's a good point, yeah. It's are interesting. Then, if Louisville's going to play like 16 games, they got the Virginia Tech game got postponed. So are you going to eventually, are you going to evaluate Louisville on like an 11 or 12 game schedule? Yeah, it's a good point. I don't know. It's tricky. So, it's tricky at that so point. So a lot of that stuff is going to come into play and they're going to have a lot of explaining to you. So I guarantee you a couple of things. One, people are going to disagree with what the committee does. It's not mm-hmm. going to make any sense. Two, um, the committee may not even understand why it does what it does. <laughs> because there's going to be disagreement in that room and they're going to have to put somebody up on the board. Yeah, so I've, talked to to pe- I've talked to some people that have been in that room before. Mm-hmm. And there's a disagreement and the clock is ticking. Like, look, we got to put someone there. We just have to, look, just everyone let's do a vote. Mm-hmm. And the majority Raise your of hands. Hand. And, and, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, there are there, and I think that there's been more of that this year than ever before because there's going to be a lot of different opinions about how you judge Louisville. You know, how you how you let let's say Baylor would have lost to West Virginia last night. There'd have been two straight losses, but they were coming off the loss. So mm-hmm. suddenly, you, you know, if Baylor loses in the Big Twelve championship game, do you bump them to a two, mm-hmm. or or not? It, it's very interesting to see what's going to happen. And, and Carolina hasn't had a COVID pause, but they've been affected by other COVID pauses for sure. Yeah. I mean, the Marquette game never should have been played. That should have been at Boston College. Carolina would have gone up there and won that game. Yeah, oh, easily. Yeah, you would think so, yeah. So at first people are like, hey, that's good. Marquette's better than BC. It'll help their NET rating. Doesn't help when you lose. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't help help when you're not ready to go. Exactly, exactly. Well, AJ, before we wrap this thing up, let's just – I think this is important for people to understand kind of how the net rankings work for those who don't get it and just how – they can fluctuate as much as they do. And just honestly, some of the weirdness that we've already mentioned that is in the net rankings right now, you mentioned it that, you know, I think yesterday you said Carolina had played 10 Q1 games and now it's nine because state dropped out. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah. Um, and so it can fluctuate every day. It's something that fluctuates all the time. We've kind of talked about some of the bubble teams off camera and in our previous podcast we did on NCA uh, on, on this kind of situation in terms of the teams like Stanford, who Carolina beat earlier this year. It's important for them to continue to win games, to move them up the net rankings, which makes Carolina look a little bit better. Uh, Kentucky, even, for instance, teams like that that Carolina has played, beaten this year. If teams like that can keep winning, that's going to only benefit Carolina moving forward. Now, some of the weirdness that's going on in the net rankings, we were talking about this in, off in Stanford's case, they have to start winning again. Yeah, they have to start winning. Yeah, yeah. So keep winning with 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 uh, Mr. Haas's team out there in Palo Alto. They had two horrible home losses last week to yeah, that Oregon kind of again. They led for thirty six minutes and they lost at home to Oregon State. So they really mm-hmm. screwed themselves and they screwed Carolina in some ways too. Go ahead. Exactly, which is the interesting part about the net rankings because, like I said, and we've talked about before, you're relying sometimes on other teams to help you out. Now, mm-hmm. one of the weird one of the weird things that we've kind of talked about off camera, like I mentioned, if you guys go look at the net rankings right now. You look at the top 10, you're like, okay, you know, I, I recognize a lot of those teams. That makes sense. And then you see, you look at the number nine team, you see Colgate in the Patriot League, who's second place in the Patriot League. Keep this in mind. 11 and one overall, have played zero Q1 games, five and one in Q2 games, zero Q3 games, two and zero oh in Q4 games. And they're sitting at number nine in the net rankings, only played 12 games overall, all of which have been in their conference. It, it's it's weird, man. And there's some other teams you can pull out of there too. Even say San Diego State, Loyola, Chicago. I mean, there's just a lot of there's a few teams in these top 20 rankings where you look at it and you just say, how the heck are they in there? I mean, the Colgate one is mind boggling to me. Really. At least with San Diego State and Loyola, when you watch them play, you know they're NCAA tournament. Yeah, team. but just Col- but their resumes don't back <laughs> yeah. up their NET mm-hmm. ranking. Colgate. Not all, Colgate, their league has broken it down into three divisions this year, and mm. you're only playing who's in your division. Now, some of the teams in that league have played non-conference games. Colgate played none. They didn't start playing until January. So they've only played – they have all – they're playing around, three, around Robin here. Okay? They've only yeah. played Holy Cross, Army, Boston U, and Bucknell. That's it. They played each of them, what, three times. They're 11-1. They played each of them three times. 
Now, when you look at their results, they've rallied, they ran an army by 44. They beat Holy Cross, I think, by 41. They got some lopsided wins. And the NET factors in margin of victory, margin of defeat, much more than the RPI used to cap it off at 10, which I totally disagreed with. You should get credit for kicking the crap out of Yeah, somebody. you definitely should, yeah. And, and, and it shouldn't, you know, a winning somewhere by 10, let's say Team A wins at Clemson by 10, Team B, whom they're competing with for a bid or a spot, wins at Clemson by 25, they should get more of a bump yeah. winning by 25 because they kick the crap out That makes complete sense, yeah. Uh-huh. So, but 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 um, Colgate also has some narrow losses, and they have a, a narrow wins. And they have a loss. They mm-hmm. have a Q three loss. So it, it makes no earthly sense. I can't explain it. I mean, they they haven't played anybody worth a crap. I mean, Bucknell at times in the past has been decent. I think they beat Wake Forest up there one year. Wake actually had the courage to go up there and play, but mm-hmm. it doesn't make any sense. I can't no, it, explain it, and, and yeah. that's kind of also. To me, it devalues the whole Q1, Q2 thing because if that club is number nine, that means hosting Colgate is a quad one game. Mm-hmm. But hosting Duke isn't. Duke would wipe the floor with Colgate. Yeah, it doesn't make any wipe sense. Wipe the floor yeah. with them. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't make any sense. And that's why I go back to we don't really know how they're going to handle things in that room. They said two months ago they were going to grade on a curve. Mm-hmm. They may have torn up whatever their recipe was then, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. uh, they were going to follow then. They may, they may they may make it up as they go along. It's like little kids playing football in the yard where they're drawing plays in the dirt. Yeah, you go you go that way and take to, to the tree and take three steps cut in and I'll throw you the ball. I could see the selection committee doing that because if you're if you're putting as much stock in quad one wins as I've been told that they're going to do, mm-hmm. then how can you not put Colgate in the field? Yeah, because only eight teams. Have a more or a more valuable quad one uh, a game for anybody, like like if you're if you're Holy Cross and you play them four times, you got four quad one games in your schedule. I know it's it doesn't make it doesn't any make sense. any sense. And I know we're, yeah. we're we're beating this into the ground, but but we're doing it for a reason so people understand. Yeah, perspective. Yeah, a lot of this doesn't make sense. And right mm-hmm. now, this is these are the tools in place. So for Carolina in a not in a weird year and a nonsensical system. And they're only going to be stuck at two quad one, two quad one wins. That's mm-hmm. what they're going to be stuck at unless they can get to Thursday or perhaps Friday. Because in order for any games they play in Greensboro, if the team that they play is 50 or better in the, in the NET, that's a quad one game. So it goes mm-hmm. one through 30 at home. Anybody who's ranked one through 30 in the NET at home, that's a quad one game. Mm-hmm. Anybody who's ranked one through 50, you play them on a neutral site, that's a quad one game. And for the road, mm-hmm. it's one through 75. That's why NC State, Tuesday, that was a quad one loss. Carolina was 2-8 in the quad one games. State fell to 76. Just outside. I don't know why. <laughs> they fell to 76 today, and it's no longer a quad one game. You know who, who replaced them at 75? Yeah. Furman. <laughs> it's I haven't seen Furman there. play, and no disrespect yeah. to the Paladins, but – I would think NC State, State playing State. Furman on a neutral site, it, it wouldn't even be a contest. I so that's so, what we're yeah. dealing with. And that's why the most important thing is just to win games. Beat Duke, mm-hmm. win Wednesday in Greensboro, and you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. Get the exactly, 17 yeah. wins, you're in good shape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You're absolutely right. I think it's a good place to wrap this up. I mean, Carolina, pretty simple for them, man. Beat Duke at home. On senior night, you'd think they'd be able to do that. You got some crowd there as well. I know it's always a tough game against the Blue Devils wherever they play. But, you know, you just got to win a, a couple more games if you can. If, and whether root, and root for Stanford. AC tournament. Yeah, root for Stanford. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt. But root for no, Stanford good. to get hot. And uh, mm-hmm. that's what Carolina fans should do. Mm-hmm. Stanford's blew a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. And they didn't oh. have De Silva this past weekend, so that's what really hurt. They led. I watched the Oregon game. They led Oregon by 30, 36 minutes. Wow! But their best player, Oscar De Silva, was out. And when they had to get shots in the last four minutes, when because Oregon just stayed close, they couldn't get a look. Oregon buckled down. They could not get quality looks because they didn't mm-hmm. have De Silva on the floor. They looked like they had no idea what they were doing. They ended up losing the game. So mm-hmm. um, I don't think they're going to help them. Carolina has to help themselves. They have to worry about anybody else. That's that's the message of this podcast. How about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like AJ said, man. If you're a Carolina fan, hop on the Stanford bandwagon as your second team right now, and keep keep rooting for the for the Cardinal over there. Because <laughs> like they could them winning a few more games could definitely, or them start winning a few games again could help Carolina. One last thing, you you mm-hmm. saw the exchange on the boards a few weeks ago, and I told yep. people when we started doing, we've been doing a daily NET report on mm-hmm. our message board. 
and it's linked at the top of our page on the front page as well. Well, some days it is right now. And I told people a few weeks ago, you guys got to start rooting for Duke. Yeah, and people did not like because that. Because <laughs> that, win, that win at Duke has to be a 2-1 win for you. Mm-hmm. And that's back when Duke was kind of floating in and out. Duke and Pitt kept switching spots, basically. Mm-hmm. And then they do quite a few games. Pitt's so yeah, far yeah. behind the top 75 now. That's not even that. The Pitt yeah, win was a Q1 win off. when it happened. Dropped off so heavily. You, you, I mean, you got no – Duke's not going to fall out of the top 75. I, I don't think, think. so. No. so yeah, I wouldn't think so. Duke won enough to stay in there. But what if Kentucky gets hot? They're 63, I think. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have to play some pretty good teams. You know, it's conceivable if Kentucky got hot and won this weekend and won – Two or three games in the SEC tournament, they could get in the top 50, and that would be another Q1 win. Exactly, so, exactly. A lot telling, of, lot I, telling Carolina fans they should root for Duke and Kentucky is like uh, you know telling Democrats to vote for Trump or telling Republicans <laughs> yeah. to vote for Biden. That, that exactly. ain't happening. It's not going to happen exactly. It's, <laughs> no. You know, <laughs> no way at all. But hey, maybe they can get on the Stanford trade. You know what I mean? That that one doesn't have too much. You got Jared Haas, a little connections to Carolina. I mean, I could, I could see Carolina fans jumping on that. Yeah, they're, 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 they're not going to do. Stanford's yeah. blowing so many opportunities in games this year. When they lost exactly. to Arizona State, that was one of those deals where, like, you know what? It's not an NCAA tournament yeah. team. Yeah, NCAA it's tournament not team quite gets good one of those games. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Every, every game they're in like that in the last six weeks, they've lost. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's how it goes, man. But yeah, let's go ahead and wrap it up here, AJ. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. We'll obviously have all the coverage you need in terms of Carolina basketball and what their NCAA tournament hopes are like moving forward. So you guys make sure to keep it locked to Tar Heel Illustrated and our website, Tar Heel Illustrated. Dot com. As always, guys, you've enjoyed the video. Like, share, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next one. Thanks.